Today we're going to talk a little bit about the LSAT writing sample. Hey, what's up everybody? Steve Schwartz here from LSAT Unplugged, joining you today to share whether law schools look at the LSAT writing sample. Before I get into it, a little bit about LSAT Unplugged. We offer live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Check out the links below this video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd love to help you out. So the reason I'm making this video is that students are always asking me about the LSAT writing sample and to what extent law schools consider it when making their admissions decisions. The first thing you should know, of course, is that the LSAT writing sample is unscored, meaning that it's not nearly as important as the scored multiple choice portions of the LSAT. However, there are a couple of reasons why in recent years, the writing sample has increased in its importance as part of your law school application. The first thing to consider is that the writing sample is no longer handwritten, but is now, of course, typed on the computer. This change went into effect back in 2019 when LSAT moved the LSAT exam itself from being administered on paper to being administered on the tablet. This was, of course, before they moved it online at the beginning of the pandemic. Now, because the writing sample was moved from handwritten to typed, it meant that law schools could more easily evaluate your writing because they didn't have to navigate bad handwriting. They could now see that it was typed, it was a lot more legible, easier to read and take a quick glance at rather than trying to parse through chicken scratch. So that is one reason why law schools are more likely to look at it simply because it's now easier for them to read. But this past year, the writing sample has become even more important with the rise of AI chatbots like ChatGPT. Now, admissions essays are not nearly as reliable in indicators of an applicant's true writing ability because ChatGPT and similar have democratized access to free or low cost editing, revising, proofreading. And so the writing sample is the one piece of writing that admission officers can trust was actually written by the applicant themselves. So it's a more reliable indicator of your true writing ability. This is of course, especially important in cases where the applicant is a non-native English speaker or in cases where their English related grades in undergrad were not that strong. Now they can see through the writing sample and really nowhere else what your true writing ability is going to be. And so for that reason, in those particular cases, the writing sample will have even more importance than it would for your average applicant. Now, to what extent do you have to prepare for the writing sample? To what extent should, what extent should you focus on it relative to other pieces of the application? Well, of course, the LSAT is still the biggest factor in the admissions process. Now, by that, I mean, of course, the scored portions of the LSAT out of 180. And so I would definitely focus on maximizing your LSAT score before I would focus on anything unscored like the writing sample. And by the way, if you are still preparing for the LSAT, if you haven't taken it yet and you're looking to maximize your score, I, of course, recommend getting a copy of my book, Mastering the LSAT, available at LSATmasterybook.com to help you structure your LSAT study plan, to help you navigate the different sections of the LSAT and the different question types. I even devoted some space there for the writing sample as well. But of course, once you've maximized your LSAT score, you're done focusing on that, you're switching gears, focusing on your application essays and the writing sample, of course, I do recommend devoting some time to getting ready for the writing sample itself. You'll be given a prompt where you have two different options. You have to pick one of those options, are you in favor of it clearly and decisively, while still acknowledging the downsides of your option and the relative strengths of the other. So in other words, you want to make a balanced, reasoned argument where you're not extreme in advocating only for your side, but rather you take a more measured approach where you make a reasoned, carefully crafted, well-balanced argument for one side over the other. Of course, there is no right answer in choosing between the two sides. They are going to be weighted relatively equally. You just pick one side relatively arbitrarily in a sense. You pick it, argue in favor of it, again, acknowledge its downsides and the strengths of the other side, but still come down clearly and decisively in favor of the side that you are picking. Structure the essay clearly, simply easy to follow. They're not gonna spend an hour reading it. They're gonna spend more like a minute or two reading it. And so of course, clear intro paragraph, clear body paragraph, arguing in favor of your side. Second body paragraph, clearly arguing or acknowledging at least the arguments in favor of the other choice, but still coming down on in favor of your side. And of course, a conclusion wrapping it all up. That's really all it has to be. Of course, take the full 35 minutes that you're given to write this essay, 
take some time to maybe make some notes, some scratch paper notes, laying out your essay and outlining it before you actually go forward writing the full thing. Of course, check it for spelling, grammar, proofread it. Those all make a positive impression on admissions officers since they do want to see not just your ability to make an argument, but also they want to see your ability to write well and clearly. Anyway, folks, that's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do me a favor and share it with someone who needs to see it. In the meantime, I'll wish you all the best and take care.